Now, this is the part of the show where we normally have an author read from their work, but Chuck has chosen um, a different option tonight, and it involves a mixer. Okay. Now, I've, I've, I've never done this before. Uh, I just know that when you go to an event like this, there's just nothing duller than watching a person read from a book, um, unless it's a children's book and your child. So. Uh, <laughs> I had this idea that, since this was sort of the theme, that I was going to sort of play little snippets of songs <coughs> that I remember just sort of caring about throughout my life. Um, the, uh, the first song I'm going to play is the first music I ever possessed. I didn't buy it, but uh, a, a guy who was dating my sister and eventually became my brother-in-law uh, gave me this eight track because he said I would like it because it was snappy. Round, round, get around, I get around, yeah, get around, round, round, I get around, I get around, get around, round, round, round. Now, uh, this is a great song for lots of reasons, but it even got better, actually. I learned this from Craig Finn. If you listen to the lyrics of this, what he just said is, I'm a real cool head, I'm making lots of bread. So this is a song about a guy who's a drug dealer. <laughs> he is driving around California with all his cool friends, selling drugs to people and therefore getting around and having just this great life. Here it comes. Or real, he's making real good bread. I like guess he's not making lots of it, but the bread he's making is good. Okay. This so next song is uh, the first probably song that I was like, this is my favorite song. I chose this is my favorite song. I heard it on the radio and I made the decision that this is the song I like the most. It's about fifth grade. Okay. Now this is a song by Eddie Grant. Eddie Grant was born in South America. He was raised in England. There's a lot of evidence that suggests this song is about a street in Pennsylvania. However, I assumed that this was a song about living in Jamaica. That was the, I mean, I, I, was, I didn't, you know, I, 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 think I probably got the encyclopedia in my house and I looked at a picture, a map of Jamaica, and I looked at a picture of Eddie Grant, and I was like, so this is what it's like to be in Jamaica. And of course, because I'm a little kid, I would get very confused by things. It's very odd to try to understand a culture through a song that you don't understand to begin with. There's a line in this song where it's like, a, there's no place to hang out or wash in. So I was like, okay. So it's really boring. And there's no fresh water. Those don't seem like similar complaints. You know? Like, <laughs> I could hang out in a boring place a long time. But if there's like no place to wash, that's a real issue. Um, I also think this is, you know, this is sort of a, you know, a reggae team song. It always seems like Americans like to have one reggae song be popular every year. Um, there was that song by Snow Informer. There was that. There was that uh, that uh, that song like by Shaggy, uh, like Ooh Carolina or whatever. It's like there's always kind of a space for one reggae song a year. Uh, and this was the first time I think that you know, I kind of was pulled into that uh, powerful vortex. Okay, um, now this next song was my favorite song in ninth grade. And I'm stopping it because when, I, when we go forward, I really want you to listen to the lyrics because this is an age in my life when, uh, I, I, where, where this music probably meant more to me than it ever had before. And uh, uh, I, I guess if I'm trying to understand the person I was in ninth grade, this was my worldview. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is like, these lyrics are what spoke to me. Okay. Not so much that part, but.
So, so this is The Right to Rock by Keel. Uh, the lead singer is Ronnie Keel, who's now Ronnie James Keel, the country artist. Um, but what I notice about this song now when I listen to it, there's a real libertarian bent to it. <laughs> like a, a, a lot of the music, that the metal that I was into, uh, I didn't really, I guess I didn't, I couldn't really explain it at the time, but uh, I often was operating from the position that I was being persecuted primarily for liking this music, which didn't seem to be happening a lot. There's another song I almost played, Crazy Nights by Kiss, where you're specifically being persecuted for being a Kiss fan. Um, but so I was, I guess that, the, you know, I was, I was very, uh, very overt about my desire to be rocking. Okay, uh, so... Uh, the next song, I'm not going to play for too long. This is a, very, a song you're all familiar with, I'm sure. I guess I was in, this was in college, so the music, the song I had just heard, of course, was like, now no one took it seriously anymore. Not that anyone really did to begin with, but now no one did. And then people were really trying to bury that music. And, uh... What I, I, you know, I, what, I, what I recall about being into this song is that it was called lithium. They don't say lithium in the song. So I had to research why you would take lithium. And it was like for multiple personality disorders. And I was like, I'm a genius. I figured out what this song is about. Okay. Next song I'm going to play, basically, is just uh, I, I, something that I got into later in life but I think it probably encapsulates what I like about music in general. I think in many ways my brother-in-law is right because this is also kind of snappy. This is a song where the singer just goes through a bunch of things people refer to him as. And he's like, maybe they're all true. I'm really too cool to be con to worry about my actual identity. Um, I, he's, I was just really, like, T-Rex is, in a way, a lot of the bands that I had listened to growing up, I think, were based on a lot of this music. I don't know why. I mean, I, I don't have a real significance to this song, except that I just wanted to play it, which is much the same reason I'm playing the next one. That's side three of Metal Machine Music by Lou Reed. And uh, actually, I played it, I thought, for the exact same reason Lou Reed probably produced it, which is like, what will happen if people hear this and have to sit through it, you know? <laughs> the last little snip I'm going to play uh, is uh, the song. OK, I got married in Minneapolis a, a couple years ago. And, uh, and there's a point, you know, uh, at, in the reception where, uh, you know, the bride dances with her father. And uh, my wife was very excited. She's very close to her dad. And I think, like, she wanted uh, to play a Will Oldham song or something. But there was some slight confusion somehow, and this ended up being the song that she danced with her dad with. <laughs> this is probably the coolest part of my wedding now. If you're having girl problems out the back of the song, I've got 99 problems, but if the chain walks, I've got the rat patrol running, patrol. You know, this is a great song, and uh, you know, once again for lots of reasons. But you know, it can also be read in two ways. Okay, he, you could imagine Jay Z is saying, you know, I have 99 problems in my life, but no bitches, man, they're not troubling me. I have 99 problems, but a bitch isn't one of my problems. My pre-existing problems do not include this. <laughs> or you could also see it as, I have 99 problems, but. Not the fact that I'm married to Beyonce. That's the one aspect of my life that is problem free. Um, so, uh, so since this, uh, since this was the music that my wife danced with her dad with, I, I kind of like the second reading of it, you know. Um, but uh, like a lot of other people who are into music, I'm just waiting 
for uh, you know the archives of JV's, Jay-Z's career to finally come out so I can get a full list of all 99 problems. <laughs> because uh, you know the ones he lists, some of our, you know, some people wanted to have him have a closed casket funeral, that is a problem. The weirdest one, of course, is that somebody wouldn't uh, bust a grape in a food fight or a fruit fight, um, which I guess makes him seem like really haphazard with produce. But uh, um, regardless, this is the music of my life. Thank you very much. Chuck Klosterman with his Wits playlist.